This conference will now be recorded. All right. Well, it is now a director deer. Is is, is director deer coming? Mr. Williams, uh, Director Deere did indicate that he would be here today, uh, but I do not see him on the call. How about Director Alvarez? Uh, Director Alvarez indicated that he would not be able to attend. Okay, then should we go ahead and get started? We have a quorum. Yes. President Williams, uh, I will run through our, uh, our board members uh, real quick just for attendance. Uh, Director Alvarez, Director Deer, Director Gray, here, Director Houston, here, and President Williams, here. We do have a question. Very good. We'll go ahead and get started. And I want to thank everybody for coming today to the Public Information and Education Committee and Special Board Meeting of the, of the West Basin Municipal Water District. It's December the 9th. It's one minute after uh, 11. And uh, we have established that we have a quorum. So I, the meeting is called to order. And um, First up would be uh, public comment. President Williams, we have not received any requests for public comment today. Uh, I do see that we do have one caller on the phone. I believe that's Director Gray. Uh, so I don't see any members of the public here uh, requesting to make public comment. Okay. Then we'll move on to item four, which is presentations. Any presentations? We have no presentations today. Uh, item five then would be action calendar. And we, we have, have no action calendar. calendar. I see none. So and we'll move on to item six, information calendar. So uh, Mr. General Manager, would you take on item six? Yes, thank you very much. Uh, the first item that we have under our information calendar is item 6A, which is our annual Water Harvest 2021 post-event summary. And for this presentation, we do have Melissa Buendia, our public information specialist. Thank you, EJ, and good morning, everyone, chair, committee, and board members. Um, I'm happy to provide a summary of this year's Water Harvest event. Um, I'll just I'll be referencing the PowerPoint slides, which I believe are in the process of getting shared right now. Um, but if you are following along in the packet, it does start on packet page six. Um, that is where the presentation or the PowerPoint slides begin. Great, thank you. Um, we can move to the next slide, please. Give it a second. Great, thank you. Um, so on Saturday, October twenty third. The district hosted its first ever online version of its annual community festival, Water Harvest. Um, this year's theme was STEAM Adventure, so science, technology, engineering, art, and math, focusing on the marvel of water's daily journey to our homes and beyond. Um, and staff set a goal to reach a minimum of 250 online attendees this year. Um, we were able to secure 573 registrants and with the normal anticipated drop-off rate we were happy to welcome 393 guests to our live stream event surpassing our goal of 250 attendees and staff worked with innovate marketing group um, to produce a fully functioning event website so one that was external from west space and site um, from which the event itself was hosted from and I'll get into a little bit more details on some of the educational program highlights in a later slide, but this slide is just a summary of that. Um, we can move on to the next slide, please. Great, thank you. Um, and this is a slide that um, features our um, an overview of the event coverage um, through paid and earned media. So this year we piloted a number of new avenues of promotion with the goal of reaching more parents um, with elementary through middle school age students. 
So some of the new tactics included um, were paid advertisements or paid placements, I should say, in the LA Parent Magazine. So we did have digital advertisements that ran for um, of the month and a dedicated e-newsletter that reached 40K um, email addresses service area wide, um, reaching parents um, with the grades, with students or children, students aged um, for grade three through eighth grade. Um, a dedicated newsletter set to the district's educator database was another new tactic that we um, tried this year. We were able to send that out to a database of 2,219 contacts um, consisting of teachers, school administrators, and art contest parent um, contacts. And this featured, this newsletter featured specific in incentives that helped encourage teachers to get their students to register. Um, so they had a better chance of winning a specific prize for their classroom. And of course, we utilize our designated a water harvest advertising budget included in the overall event budget. And we secured placement in the applicable local and um, service area wide publications in both print and digital format. And a compilation of the advertisement clips is included in the agenda packet as well. And if you'd like to um, go through that, that's on packet page. It starts at packet page 22. Um, we also work to increase our Spanish accessibility, so continuing to provide our bilingual um, event flyer as well as placing an advertisement with LA Times Espanol this year. Um, and we also provided captions on our pre-recorded elements in English and um, Spanish. So that was something new that we tried this year. Um, and of course, we utilize our social media channels with boosted posts and, uh, and live posting on event day as well. And we were able to, uh, while more schools this year opted for digital flyers, um, we were able to reach 124 schools in the service area and our total overall uh, flyer distribution um, totaled more than 25,000 uh, flyers this year. And then next slide, you'll see that this, um, this slide here features uh, two photos. Um, so in line with some of the incentives that I was uh, um, hinting at, this is a picture of our STEAM Adventure Kits, um, new this year, uh, that staff put together as an incentive for our first 200 registrants of the event. And we were able to provide some, um, each of the directors, so hopefully you were able to receive those and um, hopefully give them out to some folks in the community. And staff um, helped to put these kits together in the boardroom. You could see on that photo on the, on the right of the slide. Um, and we assembled the kits that included a mixture of kid-friendly items, so bubbles or our um, water drop pencil to gardening items like our seeds and gloves and water conservation focused items like our water our water faucet aerator and hose nozzle. So that was a fun new um, adventure that we did this year. And then moving on to the next slide. And if you're following along in the packet, um, this is packet page 10. So this slide, um, I will just now get into a few attendance highlights in the next few slides. Um, so this one here is, how did you hear about this event? And um, the question was asked of all those who registered for the event. And the top ways that folks learned about um, water harvest this year were through the schools. So that either that means through our flyer distribution to our schools, as well as that teacher correspondence via the educators newsletter that I just mentioned. Um, next, we have the West Basin's e-newsletter. So we did um, an initial one-off newsletter featuring specifically the Water Harvest event and a follow-up newsletter a couple weeks after that. Um, like I mentioned, we did social media with boosted posts so that um, was able to help people um, see visibility of this event as well as we are tied um, for friends and family. So word of mouth and uh, working with the South Bay um, Environmental Services Center on their newsletter list. So those were the, some of the top ways people heard about the event this year. And then the next slide on packet page 11, um, this is the service area as a whole. I'll wait for the slide to change. This conference will now be recorded. I apologize for technical difficulties. Uh, we are uh, working through things here. We're now recording, so if you want to continue on, um, uh, so we can move through the group. Okay. Yes, so sir, the slide that you should be seeing in just a second, um, it starts on packet page 11, like I mentioned. This is just an overview of the attendance by division. Um, so we had most attendance from division three this year, followed by um, division one, division five, um, division two, and division 
four. So, and then you can see that there is that 20% of out of service area cities, a majority of those um, that listed in, from out of service were actually folks from the city of Torrance. They just happened to not be in that portion of Torrance in the service area. So that was the majority of that. But we also had a few folks join us from different parts of Los Angeles, San Pedro, um, Lakewood and Long Beach as well. And then the next slide um, shows Division One specifically. Most folks from Division One were from the city of Carson, and the rest are split between the rest of the Palos Verdes Peninsula, as you can see there. Um, in Division Two, most folks uh, that attended were from the city of Inglewood, but it's nice to see that we were able to reach folks from Lenox and West Athens. Um, it's typically we don't see too many folks from that area um, come to our in-person event, so it was nice to see that. And then on packet page 14 for division three, um, most folks came from Manhattan Beach, but also we have a good amount of split between Redondo, Hermosa, um, Lomita, and then a number of folks from Torrance as well. And then on, in division four, um, the city of Culver City, uh, El Segundo and portions of Los Angeles. So typically our in-person event, um, we don't see too many folks from the Culver City come to our event. So it's nice to see that we, um, this type of format was able to accommodate for their attendance. Um, and then last but not least is a division five. Um, we have a breakdown between the cities of Hawthorne with the majority of folks coming from that city, um, followed by Lawndale and Gardena. So overall attendance, um, the way the attendance breakdown compares to 2019's in-person event is, um, I suspect it's mostly due to accessibility of technology. Um, typically, uh, we see Division 5 with the most attend in-person attendance for a division, whether it's just by um, how close they are to um, the facility. Um, but this year, we actually saw a rise in Division uh, Division 3 attendance. So just wanted to make that note. Okay, and then moving along to an entertainment and attractions on the next slide on packet page 17. Um, here you'll find some screenshots of the main features of the event website that I mentioned at the start of the presentation. So upon logging in, the site featured a map of the state of California with clickable elements. Um, so that map is pictured on the top left, um, allowing for guests to interact and engage with unique content that was developed by our program partners. And we actually had 70% participation with that map. So that is a great percentage. Um, and the primary feature of the event, of course, was the two hour live stream educational program, and it featured seven sessions of technology demonstrations, tours, science experiments that uh, to help attendees understand the origin of their water supply and the importance of conserving our precious resources. So we had a very high engagement during the live stream sessions. Um, if for anyone that logged in, you could see that the chat box was just high speed. And the chat box was constantly buzzing and we had more than a thousand chats come through um, from our attendees engaging with our um, presenters and asking um, really great questions and the event actually opened with the pre-recorded uh, welcome video message from the board of directors and interim general managers so i just want to take a moment to thank you again for coordinating with staff and being part of the kickoff of the event um, but shortly after the welcome video, we were again joined by our uh, subject matter experts and we were lucky to uh, partner with the California Department of Water Resources, Metropolitan Water District of Southern California, the LA County Sanitation District. We had um, Daryl and Janelle um, from West Basin Municipal Water District, of course, and then Brownhouse Aquarium and Water Replenishment District. Um, so guests were also encouraged to not only participate in the live stream events, but we did have a gamification feature. Um, we had a water molecule scavenger hunt. Um, you had to search events through the event site to find all eight water molecules to gain points. And those points gave you higher chances of winning prizes um, at the very end, which is what we closed the event with um, our opportunity drawings. And we were able to give away a total of 10 prizes um, with the grand prize, including a water efficient clothes washer and dryer for those participants who were 18 and above. And the winner um, for this year's uh, grand prize for that was from the city of Inglewood. And an electric bicycle and with protective gear was the grand prize for those 17 and below. And that winner was from the city of Torrance. 
And last thing I want to highlight on this uh, particular slide or this section is that the external event website was accessible to all of those who registered for a full month after the event. So if you wanted to circle back, if you registered for the event and you wanted to circle back and watch, rewatch one of the live stream sessions, you could be able to do that. Um, but we did recognize that for those who weren't able to register, we were able to retrieve those um, those videos and that content, and we are we have that available on demand um, for on our West Space and website now on our Water Harvest page. So anyone can still access all of the content that we were able to produce for this year's event. All right, moving to the next slide. Um, event costs. So this is just a, a grid that shows a breakdown of some of the event costs. The second column is the comparison to the 2019 in-person event, um, the third column being the 2021 numbers. So I'll just quickly go through these items here. Um, our total budget for um, this year's event was $84,500, which was a $60,000 um, difference from the 2019 budget. Um, and that includes the event production budget, which is the next line here of $50,000. So um, this line item is specifically for the uh, supposed to be utilized for the event production consultant. So again, we worked with a, a group called Innovate Marketing Group, and they helped to provide that um, event planning and uh, the production, video production, or the uh, live stream production side of the event. Um, the next line here is the sponsorships and external funding line. Um, this year, we were able to secure $11,000 um, to help offset the total cost of, to the district. So thank you to the administration team for helping secure those funds, as well as a special shout out to Gus, who helped with um, securing funds through uh, METS MA funding to offset some of our costs for our conservation items that we provided to the community, as well as the grand prize um, washer, uh, water efficient washer and dryer. Okay, that brings us to the total spend here. Um, it's approximately for this year, $80,000. I say approximately because we are still waiting on a few invoices to come through, but this approximation does include um, those pending invoices. Um, so that is a total of 64,000 um, costs $64,297 of cost savings to the di district um, and uh, compared to 2019. And then the next line here is just, again, the attendee number. So our goal this year, recognizing that it was an online format, we're not gonna um, get that typical thousand folks that typically come to our in-person event. Um, so we were able to exceed our goal, our minimum goal with our 393 attendees and 573 registrants. Um, and that brings us to the per capita cost here. So the compared to um, the 2019 or 2021 per capita cost here is $201 and one cent. Um, but I just did want to note um, some of the added value that we were able to bring to this type of event. I know it's not our typical in-person um, event and that has its own value as well. But I just wanted to note some some items that I think were worth highlighting. Um, but unlike in our person events, our in-person events, we were able to capture um, the content from our sessions hosted by our program partners. And now that is um, is classified as a digital assets that we are able to provide to the community all year round. So typically we have stage shows, workshops, and tours that we do live in person. Um, but now we are able to have some of our statewide and regional partners be able to share uh, their knowledge and we're able to have that um, as an asset, an educational asset that um, is accessible for all folks all year round. And then we also really had the opportunity to focus and hone in on the narrative we were sharing with our audience. Since it was a two hour live stream event, we were able to work again with statewide and regional program partners that sometimes we're not able to um, host at our event, um, just given distance. So just two things I wanted to note there. Um, and then the last row that we have here is the total cost to the district. So it's approximately $69,000. Um, so the way we got to that number was looking at the total spend, um, subtracting the sponsorships and the external funding we were able to secure. And that's how we got that total cost to the district number. Okay, um, I will move along to the next slide on event sponsors on packet page 18, I believe. Um, so this again is just an overview of the sponsors we were able to secure this year thanks to the partnership of 
um, the administration services team. Um, again, we were able to secure $11,000 um, with WRD, Suez, OMLO, and MET. Um, we were able to secure additional funding from MET via the MAA funding. So thank you again, Gus. And then I think I have a few more, just a couple more slides here numbers just to close out. things out. Those numbers don't add up. Why, why is that? Can you go back to the numbers? Sponsorships. Jeez. Previous slide. No, no, no. It's at 11,000 total, but there's more than 11,000 listed above there. What's, what's the discrepancy? Oh, I think I miswrote that. I apologize. So that number, that 85, 25, and 25 should add up to the to the total. I apologize about that. So it's a, it's more than that. So that's good. Okay, thank you. Then we can go to the next slide, please. Oh, this slide here is just a attendee feedback. Uh, it just pulled some comments from our post-event survey. Um, so, so I'll just read one of the comments here. Um, we, my son and I, had an excellent time. Good way to enjoy company and learn at the same time. I want to commend the organizers and speakers for a job well done. So it was nice to be able to um, send out this post-event survey immediately after the event and gather some um, positive feedback overall and some constructive feedback from um, our attendees, so it's always nice to be able to gather that type of feedback from our um, attendees. Um, and then the next slide, I believe hopefully we're able to show this short video. It's just a summary video that our event production team was able to put together for us that summarizes um, what I just spoke about. Thank you so much. Um, so with that, I just want to say thank you again to the board, the general manager, and of course, all of the departments um, and the PI team that really did contribute to the success of this event. Um, without the collaboration um, interdepartmentally, this event wouldn't be possible. So I'm really grateful um, to um, the team here. And you, this actual, this photo here is actually a screenshot of one of our last team meetings with our event production team in Innovate Marketing Group. Um, so I just wanted to give them a little shout out um, as well. Um, but with that, that is the conclusion of my uh, presentation or my report. I'm happy to hear any feedback um, of the event, what your thoughts were, as well as any um, ideas uh, for the next year. And um, just as a preview, I will be covering the next item, which provides a highlight of the 75th anniversary and of the district and the intentions to tie um, that as our theme for next year's water harvest event. So again, thank you so much. Um, I'm open to any questions or um, comments from the board. Very good. Well done. And uh, Director uh, Houston. Sure, thank you, Mr. Uh, Chair. Thank you, Melissa, for the, uh, you know, the roundup of everything. Um, I just have, a, I have a couple of, comments and first of all i have received a lot of really good feedback from folks in the community who did attend it um you know who have run into me and uh, said they, they enjoyed it uh, as well as the kits that we gave away uh, those are very popular uh, even the ones that uh, you provided to the board members to give uh, so again people really like the kits um, in particular the gloves and the uh you know like the water saving devices so the the, the piece for your hose the, uh, you know, the that device and also for the sink um and i hope you guys can hear me i'm getting a lot of feedback yeah i hear that feedback but uh i can hear you yeah and so then back to this um but i do want to go real quick to slide number two which was the event overview. There you go. And I just wanna, I wanna understand, cause I see we had 
573 registrants, 393 viewers, and 275 logins. So what's the difference between logins and viewers? Great question. Yes. So we wanted to highlight both those numbers there. So the difference is, is that we had, for example, 393 viewers, but within those registrations, they had, um, uh, oh, excuse me, let me repeat that. So like for, for example, we had 573 registrants, but on under one registration, it may be a parent of two or three kids that wanted to register. So we include those names of those students in that um, in that registration. So we had a total of 75, uh, 275 folks log on, but with those, considering the additional registrations under a, a number of those, we actually had 393 attendees or viewers of the program. I hope that is that clarifies that. Okay. Um, okay, great. And then let's just go real quick to slide number, I guess it was number 13, so you had the cost breakdown. Director Houston, we're moving to that slide. If you could just give us one second, I apologize for the delay. Okay. There we go. Okay. So just real quick, I mean, number one, I I would really want to compliment staff on working with what we had to work with this year. Um, but at the same time, obviously, I think this spells out clearly, you know, how much money we ended up spending for what I believe was a very small amount of participants, if you will. And the fact that, you know, we ended up authorizing 84 some thousand dollars with the goal of reaching 250 people, that just seems pretty off the charts if you think about it. That's over 330 some dollars a person. That was just a goal. And so I know we met the goal by a bit. Um, but at the same time, I just, I just boggles my mind that we're spending this kind of money to reach such a small audience. So I think that we really have to look at this heavily next year when we do this, hopefully in person again. Because even when I see these other numbers from 2019, to have a budget of $145,000, give or take. I think that's a lot. So I guess I would put it this way, especially for the general manager, is when we start getting into the conversation for next year's planning, this needs to be a, a heavy conversation for the board to decide what, what the budget goal should be and understand how much we're spending on certain things like our, our event production portion, when we hire outside consultants or what have you. Um, and then last but not least, we probably really need to look at how we get more sponsors to help offset some of the costs. Cause I just, I, I don't understand how it could even cost us upwards of 130 to $150,000 to put on an event in our parking lot. I know we have the DJ and a number of other things, but you know, this is, it's a, it's a lot of money. Now, granted, when we get over a thousand people or 1200 people, it does make it more cost effective. So anyways, what I'm, what I'm just doing is giving some feedback from my perspective, but also asking that next year when we get started in this discussion, that the board really needs to have a good understanding of the breakdowns. So next year's, I think will be more cost conscious. Um, and I'm looking forward to how we can get more people there. Uh, and then last but not least, and I will say again on the complimentary side, the videos were excellent. Uh, we did have different agencies participate than we ever normally would. And so maybe these are some ways that we can try and look at how do we integrate that in the future as well. So um, anyways, I'm glad you put these numbers here so we could see it. Um, this is really enlightening for all of us. And so we need to make sure we're looking at that going forward. Overall, I think it was a good production and a good effort. And the wonderful thing is it's still, portions of it are still on our 
YouTube channel so people can check that out. And, uh, and again, lastly, I did hear some really wonderful feedback from uh, members of not just my area, but some of the other divisions that did attend and were very complimentary. So thank you, staff, and, and thank you, EJ. Thank you. Any other uh, comments out there? Yes, uh, President Williams, Director Gray. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Thank you. Well, I I did participate at least listen to most of the presentations for the Water Harvest, and I thought it was a great idea to include other agencies to make presentations. So I want to compliment staff on that planning process. Um, Director Houston brought up the, the money factor, which is, is valid, but I think this is the first time that we did this, so it's, it's kind of a trial basis. And of course, we do not know how many people are going to tune in to Zoom meetings or whatever when we do this. So I'm sure staff will, <clears throat> will analyze it and try to figure out what to do moving forward, but I think it's kind of hard to predict how many people are going to be part of an event when you do it when maybe other agencies have done it and and it's been you know costly but this is different for, for us it's not the normal this is kind of the new normal even moving forward so i just want to thank staff for their creative way of presenting water harvest this year um and certainly we will look at next year in terms of what we've learned this year thank you Thank you. Anyone else? Well, I, I just want to end with saying that uh, great job. Uh, I understand that, uh, you know, we, we have a real tough job of, of convincing people that we are important and that they need to get involved with us. But for, you know, what you have to work with, I think you did a great job and you can tell that we have a ways to go because how many people come to our board meetings? You know? mm -hmm. How many people, you, you don't see many people at our board meetings. We don't even see many of our customers, the people who we go out of our way to, to uh, uh, make sure they stay in touch with us. But um, I don't know, we, we need to perhaps pick up and start uh, marketing like, like a retail organization to get people uh, interested in us, uh, because right now the interest is still low. And as long as that is the, the case, we're not gonna have many people coming to an event like an online event uh, when they can be doing something else. But we, we recognize which uh, that Director Houston indicated that we're gonna have to do, do a lot for the, the uh, next year's uh, in-person event to get folks we, we need to get folks to come out to our events so they get to get to know us and want to come um, to uh, uh, to you know, take advantage of the things that we have for them. So just keep doing working as hard as you you are and and uh, coming up with new ideas. I'm sure you will. Uh, we have a lot of young, uh, intelligent, and energetic folks on our staff. So uh, keep it going. Oh, and make sure you have your members straight. Thanks. Thank you. Anything else? Well, let's move on to the next item, please. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much, President Williams, and thank you for the feedback uh, from the board. The next item that we have is item 6B. It is our 70, 75th district anniversary celebration overview. Again, we have Melissa Buendia, our public information specialist for this presentation. And this does begin on your packet page 48. Hey, thank you again, EJ. Um, yes, as mentioned um, in the previous public information and education committee, I believe um, last, if not last month, but the month before staff has been developing a year long series um, of commemoration and celebration of the district's 75th anniversary coming up in the new year. Um, so this table does provide a monthly overview of the activities that staff does plan on implementing through the year. 
um, to, highlight, to highlight this milestone in the district's history. So I'll just quickly go through some of the or overarching themes and ideas, um, but I am interested in on taking any notes on any ideas and the feedback um, that the board may have. So the plan is to kick off the uh, kick off the year long celebration at the end of January, officially announcing the district's anniversary with a special a reveal of a special version of the district's logo. So that is currently in production right now, and we will share it along um, once it, we get to a, a finalization point. Um, and then following that, new elements will be introduced on a monthly basis that brings awareness to. Um, and or highlights the different elements of the district's history from pre-formation, formation of the district, innovation through the years, and looking into the future. Um, some example of planned elements are ongoing social media, highlighting specifically history facts or milestones um, in that specific month. Um, so we're looking to do at least one to two mentions monthly. Um, updated board and staff group photos. Um, when going through some of the archives uh, and some of the files we have here, um, it's nice to see how um, the board and the staff has evolved over time. So we would like to get updated photos just to highlight that. Um, a history feature section in the district's quarterly e-newsletter. So having a dedicated space in our quarterly e-newsletter um, to highlight a different element of the district's history. Um, the development and distribution of some uh, a branded commemorative token of sorts, um, still in the works of, of brainstorming that um, and some other appropriate giveaway items with that branding um, and, a, and a proclamation uh, presentation at the regular, uh, regular board meeting in November, which is actually the month of the anniversary. Um, and then on a quarterly basis, staff uh, intends to introduce more substantial campaign elements, such as, um, of course, starting off with the announcement and branding reveal at the end of January, followed by a commemorative video um, in April um, or in the spring. And then in the summer, we are planning to have compiled a 75th anniversary special publication of sorts, and then culminating in the fall with our water harvest event, hopefully in person, um, celebrating 75 years um, of water reliability as the theme. Um, and with that in mind, uh, we do recognize that in terms of funding for certain elements of this campaign, these activities would be split between two different fiscal years. Um, so the first leg of, of our efforts will be working with our predetermined um, budget for the, this current fiscal year. And depending on the notes and the direction and the feedback that is provided um, from the board, uh, staff can incorporate uh, additional funds in the planning process for the budget uh, for the fiscal year 2022 to 2023. Um, so with that, that is the general overview of the planned activities to recognize the 75th anniversary of the district um, through the calendar year. And I am happy to take any ideas, feedback, comments um, from the committee and board at this time. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Director Houston. Sure, thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you, Melissa, once again. Um, well, first and foremost, I think this is excellent. Uh, you all have already put a lot of thought together on things that I think we should look at, so I appreciate that immensely. I, I was just writing some notes, and I think number one, at the end of the day, 75 years next year, I think we all have a lot to be proud of, this agency's legacy uh, well before all of us came along. Um, as you know, I, I really love West Basin. I think that we are one of the best water districts in the whole region, let alone probably in the state of California. And I think we do have a lot to be proud of. Um, and we've always been a leader, right? A leader on recycled water and other things that we do. And so um, I think this is the perfect timing as uh, President Williams was mentioning in, in the last segment about how we can engage our communities. So this is perfect tie-in as well as we've got the drought going on, we've got our history, we've got this whole idea of what we're looking forward to as well. So I know you all will figure out how to encapsulate that for us. And so I'm looking forward to that. Um, two last things I wanted to mention. I like the idea of the commemorative video that uh, you, you brought up here, because I think that'll be perfect. Once you get that put into place, uh, that'll be really nice to have, and then can be, you know, the link can be distributed, et cetera, et cetera. 
but you can do a lot with that video. I know that. And um, last thing I was thinking about, because fortunately, you're not necessarily reinventing the wheel on how you do this, because a lot of organizations have hit some milestones lately. So um, I would just advise, check out what some of the cities in our area did, right? You had uh, El Segundo and Culver City at a 100 year anniversary a couple of years ago. Um, City of West Hollywood even with 1984, so I think that's a 30th year anniversary. So there's other organizations that you can look at that um, have been doing things, probably some of the water district, and we'll look at the Colorado River, right? The, the aqueduct, 75 years. And so you put all that together, I think you've got a lot of great models to look at, and then of course you're gonna do our own thing. So um, I'm really looking forward to staff, what you come up with, um, extremely supportive, and I think it'll, it'll be perfect for us next year, across the full year, you know, to continue to really focus on, on the relevance of West Basin to our communities. So thank you. Thank you. You know, uh, one of the things that you have to do, it's very simple in this marketing thing, which we are doing, is that you have to get the message out there over and over and over and over again. I know some people feel that, uh, oh, you, we, we heard that already. Uh, same old thing, but you got to do it. If you don't, people are going to forget you. And guess what? People have forgotten us. So we need to keep it. We need to be out in front of them all the time. It, it, you have to be in your face or they're going to forget you. If you've ever run a campaign, a political campaign, you know that you got to be out there. And we have such a great message, a great program that is, is for the benefit of, of the community. Uh, I mean, water, I mean, what, what could be more valuable and more important than water? And if people don't realize what it takes to get it into the glass, of coming out of the faucet, they're, they're not gonna care. So we need to be the ones out there because we can see that their uh, purveyors say a lot, but they don't talk about us getting the water to them. So we need to do it. And I, and I think you guys, you have a great program. You come up with good stuff, but don't be afraid. We, we board members cannot be afraid of, of spending money to keep it on your mind. We have to do that. And that's what I would be pushing for is uh, repeat, repeat, repeat. Yes, Director Deer. Yes. Did you Question? have something? I'm no, asking. I think uh, I think staff do that do a fine job on both of these events we discussed so far. I'm very impressed with our staff's work. Thank you. Yes. But we got to let other folks see that they work. All right. So it's, right. We have, when we come, when it comes time to to uh, vote on the money to spend to get that message out there, we cannot be stingy. As you, I might say that we cannot be parsimonious here. We got to put that money out there. The director, dear Andre, I'm sorry. Okay. Mr. Chair. Yes. Uh, just one more quick comment. I think uh, in light of the timing, the uh, South Bay Council of Governments, right? EJ has their summit coming up. I think it's in March, but um, I believe we are one of the sponsors, but that might be another opportunity if you, know, you have things in place to, um, you know, we could do something a little more than normal there, or maybe there's some messaging we can put out. Since so many of the local council members and and activists will be at that, that would be a good opportunity for us to uh, be talking about our anniversary. That's an ex excellent, excellent idea, and I think we should take it further and find out what other organizations are doing all the way down to the like the, the local uh, uh, community organizations that are having things we should try to get on their
program as well. Hey, one other thing, <laughs> one other thing. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I think El Camino College is also having their 75th anniversary next year too, I think. So just double check that. There might be some cooperative work we can do with them too, if that's, if that's accurate. A good idea because what we can do is, is congratulate them on their celebration and talk about ours a little bit. But we may need to be there to celebrate them for their milestone. And then at the same time, we'll be celebrating us. Thank you. Next. Thank you. Yes, President Williams, the next item that we have is on our information counter, it's item 6C, which begins on packet page 50. And for this report, we have Amy Rocha, our Manager of Communications. Thank you, EJ. Um, good morning, almost afternoon to members of the committee and, and board members. I hope you're having a lovely holiday season. Um, so my report, um, actually I'll start on packet page 53, please, just the, the PowerPoint slide with some actual information on it um, to review just some of our recent media relations activities. Um, so here is listed of our press releases that we issued uh, in the month of November um, on our website and distributed to media. Um, so we highlighted our water use efficiency programs with rain barrels, um, you know, commenting on METs, um, a drought declaration and what that means for the West Basin. Um, we launched our Super Cali Frugalistic drought campaign. And then um, just recently, uh, the contingency plan level three, um, which we'll also use to continue our media relations and, and make sure they're aware and, and draw attention to, you know, what that means for, for the service area and localities. Uh, so with that, we can move on to slide 54, please. Uh, and then this is just some of the resulting coverage um, in Melissa's package, uh, her previous item about water harvest, there, there was a listing of all the advertisements that we placed. So that is a compliment to this, even though that was paid advertisements. Um, this was uh, earned coverage. Um, and it, again, focusing on our water use efficiency programs and drought were the main topics. And then these are also included in the, uh, as an attachment in the item. Um, and then moving on to the next slide, please. Um, we have uh, just a little bit of a recap on Super Cali Frugalistic outcomes to date. Um, I think that um, so far, this has been a great start to um, getting um, our awareness about drought conditions, about what West Basin has to offer, and the, you know, just regional and statewide benefit to saving water um, and posing it more as a positive challenge for people to step up their um, or keep up their water use efficiency measures. Uh, so on the next slide, just showcase some of the visuals we used. Um, we created some key images across, um, you know, just uh, to represent the campaign as a whole. And then we also created uh, super localized versions, mostly for social media. And those are just a couple of examples um, for some of our retailers, as well as our other municipalities. Um, so in this case, we presented this in a toolkit. Um, that we gave to public information officers, our conservation contacts, um, the media, as well as the board to help amplify um, this, you know, uh, what we have to offer and what we had to say um, to our various stakeholders. Um, we received some great response, not only in what was shared via social media, but requests for tailored graphics. Um, we got an invitation to present to a city council in February. We've got some story coverage in um, the patch and then also Malibu Times expressed interest in drought issues more. Um, and then of course, social media shares, which I'll detail in a moment in a, a coming slide. But um, moving along to the next slide, I also wanted to point out other platforms that we updated. So you can see the um, artwork on our cover art for our social media platforms and channels, our homepage and website. Um, so really the, the first phase of this campaign was um, you know, updating our own channels that we control and then also assets that we can share um, widely. And then uh, on the next slide, I'll talk a little bit about the, the social media highlights. Um, so we were really pleased what our effort was to really tag and mention our 
retailers, our cities, um, you know, uh, influencers and key stakeholders and hoping to, um, you know, again, flag it to their attention, make it easier for them to share, be mentioned as part of this collective effort. And so um, we were definitely shared by City of Inglewood, West Hollywood, um, West Hollywood Sustainability Department on top of the city, uh, Rancho Palos Verdes, and other industry organizations such as Save Our Water, um, the California Environmental Water Association, Be Waterwise, our South Bay COG, as well as some individuals um, such as California Natural Resources um, Secretary Wade Crowfoot, California Department of Water Resources Director Carla Nemeth, West Hollywood Mayor Lauren Meister, West Hollywood Council Member um, Lindsay Horvath, and we're still monitoring and we're still, you know, keeping up this momentum and, and looking for ways to, to carry this out um, throughout the drought. And, and then also, you know, we have other images that, that we have in stock as the seasons change, as, as um, you know, conditions dictate. So we'll, we'll keep this framework going for quite some time. Um, we also, in the next slide, I just showcase kind of a twofer here, um, detail both on the launch of Super Cali featured in our fall newsletter, as well as some details about our newsletter itself. Um, but we did put it as the headlining image for our full monthly newsletter, as well as the lead story, which was the second most popular story read um, through our uh, newsletter. Um, just general uh, updates on the newsletter itself. Um, so we issued that on November 19th, uh, Friday morning to 3,800 contacts. We had a 25% open rate, which is above the industry average of 22%. Of Obviously, the holidays, you're competing with lots of sales and emails and other, you know, things that we subscribe to. Um, so what that, so I'm pleased that it's above the industry average. Um, what that really means is 912 opens and 145 clicks. And these stories detailed here bulleted on the screen are the top three stories, including drought, um, our washer rebate uh, with the change and save program, as well as a soft launch, a little preview of the Grass Replacement Plus program for our disadvantaged communities. Um, so glad that people were um, noticing kind of things that we uh, we have to offer there. Um, so I think I'll move along to kind of what's next for Super Cali Frugalistic, what's next in our drought outreach campaign, um, a lot of things happening at once. Um, so on the next slide, I want to just go into some campaign activation ideas. We have a scope of work planned for this, and I'd love to get feedback now to help, um, you know, just any input or things that we want to um, take into account. I did hear comments from previous committees, you know, uh, taking a marketing approach and really getting out there and, you know, uh, desire to be in the communities, you know, to the extent that we can and we're safe and, and we are able to. And I think that this idea that I'll present in a moment kind of captures elements of all of that also stays within a budget that we have available at this time. Um, and um, it would basically involve some kind of roadshow of, of sorts, um, really five events uh, in five different cities um, over a course of five days uh, in the early part of 2022, again, while people are really starting to, you know, heed what we're saying about the drought and water con supply conditions, um, we would be providing some giveaway kit variation, kind of what Melissa presented in our STEAM adventure kits, a little bit on, you know, what Gus is putting together with the change and save kits to really provide community members with resources to save water. So not just talking talk, but really providing physical ways of saving water. Um, and then we would like to also tie into our 75th anniversary because again just highlights uh, our long-standing um, presence in in these communities um, and i also think that it'll present some really great um, media relations opportunities whether it's to provide the video we capture or to invite media there to talk about um you know with members of the public who are responding and their thoughts as well as um, board members or any staff members who are present to to um you know, speak to our, our community um, so that is um, the, the core part of what we would look to plan now and in the early parts of the new year. And then uh, secondarily, um, a speakers bureau approach, um, you know, really focusing on our chambers and councils and making sure they're aware of conditions and what we have to offer. Um, and uh, I'll stop right there. I think I would like to uh, invite some feedback or reactions or ideas that come to you um, as I speak. 
Well, thank you very much, uh, Director Houston. Sure, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Amy. Um, I mean, first of all, I think this has gone really well. And uh, once you all rolled it out, it just sort of took off from what I could see. So I think that, it, you know, we hit the nail on the head with this particular program. So uh, the, the pictures are very catchy. Uh, you can't help but notice them and they get attention, especially on social media. So again, I'm gonna applaud staff on that. Um, regarding the outreach activation, I like your idea of this road show. I guess you said something about five cities or something like that. I suppose you're talking about one city in each division is what I assume. Um, I guess, We'll obviously talk more about division four because it's always a little tricky for our division but off the top of my head i think the two that obviously resonate probably best is el segundo because it's right here local and has the plant and the community here knows the plant very well and they know west basin well but if, if you did a, a road show or you went down to main street for example and you're doing something or, or richmond street then that might be a thought. That is an option. Or yes, of course, Culver City, because Culver City is extremely engaged with West Basin as well. So those are just two off the top of my head for my division. And uh, secondly, again, those kits that you all put together were really excellent. Uh, quite a surprise when you open the box to see what's in there. And again, I had really good feedback from folks, whether they had registered and you sent them one or the ones I gave to folks. And a thought I had would be, because those kind of are a, a catch-all, if you will, right? There's stuff for kids in there, there's stuff for adults in there. So maybe uh, you have some of those, but at the same time, maybe you do some tailored kits, like you have a smaller, like here's the one for kids, because let's say there's that road show and people just want kid-related things, or they just want the adult-related things. So again, the gloves, people really like those gloves. Um, and the same with, you know, the aerators for your faucet, things like that. So you might want to tweak out the, some separate kits, and that way staff is not putting together massive amounts of full-on kits that you know, might have things that people don't want. And last but not least, maybe you just have a la carte things there that people can just grab. So uh, anyways, I think um, we got some great opportunities next year, so I'm really glad you all are thinking ahead, and that's my feedback at this time. Okay, that sounds uh, very good, and I would uh, just ditto what uh, D Director Houston um, had said. And in addition to that, uh, I, I think we need to really uh, get on the city of Carson because uh, we have a, a plant there, you know, and it's named after one of the important people of coming from the city of Carson. That is. Uh, uh, the late uh, Congresswoman uh, Juanita Miller McDonald. So uh, uh, we need we need to take advantage of that. And uh, we have a in the, in the city of Carson, they have lots of community groups that uh, uh, I have enjoyed making presentations to them back before the uh, pandemic struck and, and stopped all of that. So I'm I'm hoping that we're going to get back to in-person uh, meetings with these organizations uh, and then catch them up. And especially now when we're going to be celebrating our 75th anniversary, we can. Uh, is, that, is that right? 75th. That yes. um, uh, we have a lot to tell them and handing out these kits. They look very expensive though, but I don't know if uh, how do we pay for these kits? Just off the side here. Yeah, so that would be something that would come out of some of our um, PI or public information education budgets. So um, what I my approach would be would be to continue to work with, um, you know, the support we've had to keep the branding going and some of the implementation of the video. We'd have to do a procurement process under the general manager's authority. And then we have some of our promotional items kit, um, promotional items and outreach line item budget that these kits would come out of. And yes, um, great points all around in terms of, yeah, being aware of how much the costs, um, you know, cost to um, the value of the kits. 
um, although we are trying to provide literal value to to the community um, so that they can use these things um, and then yeah the fulfillment so kind of the labor required to compile them and put them together whether it's staff time or um, some additional support there so um, they are currently part of our pipe budget for the fiscal year and again if we roll out you know which I'm assuming we're gonna keep going throughout the rest of 2022 so again as to Melissa's point you know we're all the whole West Basin staff is um, beginning budgeting efforts to think about next fiscal year so kind of one foot in both fiscal years is our mindset okay because the, the two of the uh, larger cities in my uh, division city of Carson and uh, uh, Rancho PV have a lot of community events and uh, when we have an opportunity to 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 attend and speak before them and and put up uh, tables and have our and display our our uh, materials and I'm hoping that we'll be get back to that soon and because uh, uh, we can get a lot of information out to people who need to hear it and receive it uh, without uh, uh, waiting too long before they lose interest. So uh, when the council members are talking to them, uh, they can also chime in and say, oh yeah, we had a presentation at our, at our uh, organization uh, meeting, com uh, community meeting the other day or whatever. And we, we heard about this and we think it's great, blah, 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 blah. So we need to get on that. So uh, I, I, I think we have a, a lot of opportunity here. So to utilize the, your valuable uh, service and experience and knowledge to get it out there. And I, like I said, we got to do it over and over and over again. You know, we can't do it once and thank you once and that's it that's, we got to keep on doing it so anyone else director dear yes uh, i want to go on to the next item because I, I was scheduled today to keep so let's move on oh, well you go ahead keep your schedule and we'll keep ours okay just uh, i will <laughs> okay. i have a few more slides um and I'll, I'll i'll move quickly. Um, okay. So I'm on packet page 62. I'm also talking about planning ahead and the launch of our newest um, program in partnership with our water use efficiency specialist Jennifer Vasquez um, about the grass replacement plus program. And um, this is our um, program targeted to um, uh, commun eligible communities that are within a certain enviro screen and uh, generally known as disadvantaged communities, um, but there's more um, criteria to that. Um, but this would offer up the free landscape design, the trees, and um, the $5 rebate. And so, as I mentioned, you know, we, we previewed this in the newsletter, and we are currently working on um, materials. So uh, we have a flyer um, that's drafted. We have website content in the works, e-blast, social media, um, you know, we're working on the portal itself, which, um, you know, Jennifer may get into. Um, and uh, we we are uh, even have a media a broadcast media opportunity already just expressing interest in, in grass replacement in general. Um, I did want to just give a high level uh, overview of our approach to marketing. Um, again, this is a pilot program with limited, um, you know, packages, so to speak, um, to offer. Uh, and again, Jennifer can speak to that uh, in her presentation. But um, we're taking a, a grassroots influencer approach. So really focused on, and again, this was also some, some um, you know, comments that we heard from the board as well, um, focused on environmental, faith-based, nonprofit groups, influencers of that nature um, that we can build off of their their reach to their communities, um, as well as really uh, the vendor we have in place is Tree People, and they're a well-known environmental NGO in their own right. So really kind of how do we, um, in part because it's also budget conscious and budget driven, um, you know, how do we get the word out to, to those communities? And then secondly, um, is a highly targeted promotional email that has um, really narrowed the criteria based on the whole of the mapping system of who we determine are eligible. You know, we can't reach all those at once. So um, taking a, a targeted email approach to focus on 30,000 households um, that have homes in these areas. Um, and then, as we've always said, uh, the, the focus areas include the city of Inglewood, Lenox, Del Air, 
Athens, Westmont, and the cities of Hawthorne, Gardena, Lawndale, and Carson. Um, so I'll just leave it at that right now. We will, we are working, you know, to lockstep together with water use efficiency to um, launch as feasi feasibly possible. But right now we need people to go to be able to check their eligibility. So we're building out some of that um, technology and screener um, background. So um, I'm going to go ahead and skip the next slide because we already talked about 75th anniversary. But again, as Can Melissa detailed. Uh huh. Go ahead. Really fast. That last slide. Um, that the the graphic or the logo i mean the graphic um now what is that particular graphic is that one that we are already using or is that one that we're working on this graphic um that is one that we're planning to use it builds off of our grass replacement program at large um the the image of the plus is you know indicative of the name of you know more than just the rebate um the, it has an image of a tree to tie into the free trees that are um unique to this program and um on our draft flyer we also have some imagery of it looks like landscape design watercolor image um we pull on more literal representations of a tree that are eligible and are drought resilient um but yeah that is the logo so um, we are looking to launch. So if there's any oh, <laughs> comments. No, but that's the logo understood. And then that graphic below it is what, I don't know, are we using that one now? Yes, yes that's our regular grass replacement ah. program. So the spinoff is grass replacement plus, ah. um, and both will still be eligible. You know, both are still programs that we're, we're promoting in their own rights, but, you know, with a more focus on the, on the DAC communities for plus. Great. I mean, I do think that the board members' names ought to be on that and the divisions like we normally do. So I, it's not here, and if it's and even the pictures, if possible. But I think we should be consistent with that. So yes. when you all when you all finalize it, I think uh, you know we have to have those on there. Um, and then one other question: I heard those places you're targeting, but are there any areas in division four that also get targeted like some of the unincorporated uh, i don't know if they hit that threshold but are, is there uh, like del air or wiseburn or up towards uh ladera uh del air is on the list in athens i believe and westmont i think those are in division four and then i'm not sure i can't remember off the top of my head lennox is kind of one of those straddling areas between two and four okay gotcha okay great thank you okay then um, moving along to social media highlights, we can also skip to the Facebook slide, which is a packet page. Sorry, I'm like trying to click on the, <laughs> the other screen. Um, Remember? Uh, packet page 56. Packet and six. uh, 66, yes. Oh, 66. <laughs> And this one again just highlights the popular posts. Um, I, um, you know, we're just trying to put out tips and be a little bit more graphics oriented. We also did get nice recognition for um, district veterans, which includes um, Director Williams as well as IT and operations staff. Um, Instagram um, on the next page, um, you know, different different take. Uh, Rain barrels was popular as well as the water bottle filling station that um, we did um oh my gosh i'm um, el segundo i'm sorry el segundo here um and then for uh twitter then the next slide um again similar uh in water bottle filling station and tips and then finally um uh, linkedin uh super cali frugalistic and our west basin chats which allowed um viewers to interact with staff to answer their questions about programs so at, that concludes my report Any questions, comments, director? Houston. One quick question. Which city council requested a presentation, Amy? Um, that was the city of Hermosa Beach for uh, I believe it's February 22nd. So we're we're working on that. And so and then again as part of like the follow-up is just reaching out, you know, so that we can add to that list. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, quickly, uh, Mr. Uh, General Manager, um, is there some um, language in our admin code that uh, limits uh, 
council council members uh, directors who are up for re-election uh, that they have to be careful when we have our pictures on uh, on on it literature within six months of the election. Yes, President Williams, we'll make sure that uh, any and all collateral materials adhere to any uh, state, federal, and uh, federal laws, as well as our admin code. Uh, you know, some of these things lend itself specifically to mailers, uh, as uh, we utilize a lot of flyers and stuff like that. As long as they're uniform, I think we should not have a problem, but we'll make sure that we run that through legal counsel. Okay, thank you. And if I may add on that note, it, I think it's typically, again, I'll work with EJ and, and general manager to confirm, but um, it's usually the issue becomes when it's only a single photo and, and over certain quantities. Um, so we'll be very mindful of that uh, again, but just to give you some, some sense of what I, I look for as a communications manager. Okay, very good. Sure. And let me chime in, Mr. Chair. I think off the top of my head, the, the big thing for us is in our code is sponsorships. And once um, an election is moving forward or something like that, then we, the director in that division cannot sponsor things. I think that's the main thing, our code, but EJ will obviously yeah, double we'll check. Just, just, just checking. You got it. The next item. Yes, President Williams, the next item that we have is item 6D. It's our conservation programs update. It begins on packet page 86. And for this presentation, uh, we do have two of our uh, conservation staff. We have Gus Meza, a senior water policy and resources analyst, as well as Jennifer Vasquez, a water policy and resources analyst. Thank you, EJ. And uh, good afternoon, uh, Chairman Williams, uh, committee and board members. Um, I have a few uh, updates on our water use efficiency programs, and then I'll be uh, turning this over to Jennifer Vasquez for her updates. Um, my first update is on our change and save program, which can be found on board packet page 86. Uh, through our change and save program, we have provided 1,000 free conservation kits and 184 uh, clothes washer rebates at $500 each. Uh, we are working closely with the South Bay Environmental Services Center uh, to find outreach opportunities to provide these kids. Uh, for example, uh, they're planning on attending the City of Lomita's uh, Farmer's Market this Sunday, uh, where they plan on taking about 50 of these conservation kits uh, to distribute to residents there. Uh, so they're going to continue uh, to look at the, um, the various cities uh, throughout the South Bay uh, to look for more um, outreach opportunities. And uh, also they're promoting the, the kits and the rebates, the clothes washer rebates uh, through their newsletter and through eBlast. And we're also uh, promoting that through our website, the social media, uh, the, South Bay, um, the South Bay Environmental Services Center will also be attending the Hawthorne uh, Business Expo on January 26th, uh, they'll be promoting our, our Cash for Kitchens program, and but they'll also be taking more of these uh, uh, residential conservation kits as well. Uh, this program is 100% funded um, by a, uh, a DWR grant and through funding from MWD. Um, and so that is my update uh, for this program. And I could stop here to see if there is any questions or comments. And um, if not, I can go ahead and continue on um, to our Malibu Smart and uh, Rain Barrel program, uh, which is um, on page 87. Um, for our Malibu Smart and Topanga Smart program, um, we have completed uh, the distribution of different devices uh, we've been working with LA County Water Works District 29 in that area where they have installed over uh, 2,000 smart meters um, for their, you know, for tracking water use and billing purposes. Uh, we've installed uh, 32,000 feet of drip irrigation, 100 smart sprinkler timers, um, 1,000 uh, water efficient sprinkler nozzles, We've distributed 154 rain barrels 
And all this uh, combined is saving over uh, 27 million gallons per year. Uh, so we're close. Uh, we're about 98% of our goal. Um, so our goal is to get to 100%. And for this current phase now, um, we and our partners uh, are promoting uh, the, uh, the free smart controllers and installation of sprinkler controllers. Uh, our goal is 300. Um, and as of today, we've installed 34 of these timers and have nine um, scheduled and another 19 uh, that our consultant is uh, currently processing. So we're getting good traction um, with our promotion on these uh, smart sprinkler timers. Uh, so we'll continue on with that. Um, again, this program is 100% funded by a DWR grant and uh, we are currently within our budget. Uh, so I'll pause here for any uh, comments or questions. Seeing none. Yeah, okay. Uh, sorry, I was trying to get off mute really fast. Um, no, I think we're doing great on this. So it looks like it's gonna be wrapped up by end of June is, is what happens, right? Correct. And then you said, we have about a hundred of the smart sprinkler timers have been installed or provided. Our goal, uh, yes, uh, director, you our goal is 300. Uh, we've installed 34 okay. and have uh, a nine scheduled to be installed. And our consultant, um, our W. Jones um, agency is going through another 19 uh, residents that are interested in participating. And uh, we plan on uh, sending out um, another email blast uh, in the next couple of days uh, to promote uh, the program. Um, we, we received a lot of interest from our first email blast um, about a month ago, and so we're going to be sending that out again. Okay. And then the uh, city of Malibu and LA County, they're also going to promote this uh, on their next door. Um, oh, okay. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. No, it's, it's a great partnership, and we're almost to the finish line. So. Um, what, I, what I'm really looking forward to is when it's all wrapped up, I, I assume you guys will be putting together some sort of a uh, you know, completion uh, report or package um, that you can share with the board and, uh, and perhaps that somehow you share with uh, those community partners up there too. Um, but I think we should have a lot to be proud of once we're done. So uh, with that, thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay. All right, thank you. Carry on. Thank you. Uh, the next program is our rain barrel program. Um, so we have good news to report. Um, in November, we opened up registrations for both our home delivery program and the two in-person events. Uh, we have had a great response to our home delivery program. Uh, in a matter of a few weeks, we've reached our goal of 700 rain barrels. Uh, so we did adjust the program. Uh, in order to meet this demand and continue providing residents with rain barrels, uh, we've increased the home deliveries by 200 rain barrels. Uh, so the new goal now is 900, and uh, this should um, get us through this month and uh, possibly next month. Uh, so we're getting a really good traction uh, for the home deliveries, uh, but we still do have uh, 300 um, uh, allocated for the uh, for each of the two events, the January 29th event. Uh, um, at our ECL um, water recycling facility. Uh, we have 300 rain barrels allocated for there. And then February 5th um, here at our uh, DLD headquarters, we have 300 rain barrels there as well. Uh, but we're gonna continue tracking this very closely, especially the home deliveries. Uh, we'll continue to report uh, today, Thursday. Uh, we'll be sending out another update um, on the numbers. And we're also tracking the numbers for the events. Uh, so for the, the January 29th event, uh, we have 26 registrations uh, requesting 43 rain barrels. And then for the February 5th event, Carson here, uh, we have seven registrations uh, requesting uh, 12 rain barrels. Um, we do have a lot of interest again for the, for the home delivery program. Um, I think we're doing a lot better uh, this year compared to last year for a few reasons. Um, I know this year we started a lot uh, sooner, a lot earlier in the year. Uh, now, uh, start the start of the rainy season, so this is perfect timing. And then with all the drop messaging that's been happening, 
Um, I think the, the public is very aware of the situation and, and they want to do more. Um, so we do see that when we're, we're in droughts, that the, we get more activity uh, through our programs. And of course, uh, with our public information department, we're working a lot closer with our cities and water retailers. Uh, we had meetings with them and um, provided them with the, the marketing tools that they could use, the flyers and, and other collaterals for social media that they could use to spread the word about our rain barrel program. So um, it's going um, it's going very well. And then uh, we also plan on uh, sending out an e-blast uh, this week and conducting more of the boosted posts on social media. Um, and so uh, again, um, uh, directors uh, will continue to clo uh, closely monitor this program and to continue to provide weekly updates uh, to, to the board. Um, and that is uh, my update on, the, on this program. Okay. Question. Yeah, let me ask a question, I guess. Just so I understand, because I have seen those numbers you all been providing us. So are we almost, or are we are now closed out on those eligible for home delivery? Is, I mean, is, is that starting to pretty much get booked completely? Our original goal, um, Director Houston, was 700 for the home delivery program. And we reached that pretty quickly. So in order to continue, uh, with right. the demand, we increased that by uh, 200 rain barrels. Okay. So it's it's currently open, and so we have 200 more rain barrels available uh, through yeah. the home delivery program, which I think should get us through uh, this month. But again, uh, we'll we'll track that closely. Um, right. Yes. So are, you, are you pulling the extra 200? Those came off of what was going to be at the in-person events, right? That is that is correct. So. And then I heard you say the numbers of where we're at with the in-person. So I'm just assuming there's going to come a point where the deliveries are done. You know, if you if you couldn't get in the delivery schedule, you you know that that's no longer there, and we're going to push people to get the in-person, right? Um, so will there be a transition at some point that that's what we're really promoting is those in-person events? That 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 is a good question, Director Houston. Uh, Director Houston. Um, so the question is, do we stop the um, the home deliveries when we hit 900, right. or do we continue to pull from the events? So, so that is a question here for the for the committee and for our general manager here, yeah. EG, if you want to. Dr. Houston, one of the problems we've always had with this program is that when we try to do 400 rain barrels, and even we've done 500 before, is that we, in order to do that, you need well above 400 reservations in order to get 400 rain barrels away, uh, because there's, there's a considerable amount of no-shows. And what we've seen so far is just tremendous support for the delivery. And we know that it'll be easier for a delivery rather than the pickup. We'd like to see the numbers uh, move across as far as the pickups. Unfortunately, with the uh, the dates looming, we have a January 29th uh, first date, and then uh, one the, the next week on January, or February 5th. Our concerns are that we won't get a number, the number of reservations that are needed. And so mm -hmm. while we're obviously encouraging people to come by and swim by and pick them up because they can do it right then and there, uh, we, our ultimate goal is to deliver or, or uh, get 1,500 rain barrels installed in the service area, start mm -hmm. utilizing this rainwater in the uh, landscape of their homes. So we're gonna do everything we can to promote it. Uh, but you know, in years past, uh, we've put tremendous effort as far as getting uh, 400 rain barrels out on one of these events, including, you know, thousands of door hangers and stuff like that to get the word out. So uh, we're pleased to see that that there's tremendous support. Uh, we recognize that uh, in this day and age with the COVID pandemic still still active, that people would prefer a uh, a delivery. But we're going to try to guide as many people as we can to to hold these events. And regardless of the number of reservations that we have, we will have people here and ready to hand those rain barrels out, and we'll deliver or hand out as many as we can. But ultimately, over this period and through this program, we hope to get 1,500 rain barrels installed in our service area this year. Okay. No, I I do understand it now that you. Uh phrase it that way. So I get it. We have some flexibility with moving more into the home delivery program. I, I'm just assuming, but I don't know that we have budget for that or the contractor that's doing this 
you obviously able were able to to add that to the cost. We're working on that right now. We will need to kind of shift things, uh, depend how many additional rain barrels need to be uh, delivered individually. It's important to note that we actually had budgeted quite a bit of money uh, to market and advertise this campaign. The, the home delivery kind of markets and sells itself. And then of course, I'm sure most people here have seen uh, the advertisement there at the Edward C. Little Water Recycling Facility and our, our corner marketing uh, uh, platform there. So, so we're going to do that. We'll be able to shift some of the marketing dollars because we we found it to be easier to do this. And of course, we can find additional program dollars to to cover the cost. Uh, but but I, right now we're, we're really seeing a lot of support for this home delivery. Okay. Now I I mean number one I'm not I I, I get it and uh, I see if you got. People asking for 43 barrels already out of 300 at Etsy Little in uh, January. That's pretty good. So you're already on a good track. And maybe, maybe ultimately people there only want 200 barrels. So you got another 100 that need to be figured out. So it sounds like too that even if the events don't quite get the the response and we have leftover barrels, you could probably get those delivered somehow. Maybe there's people on a wait list or whatever. Um, it just it seems though you, you're gonna have to manage this just right that there's gonna be folks who you would like them to come and physically pick up the barrels rather than delivering to everybody. Um, I mean, yeah. You see here, you have we have two in-person events. We'll try mm -hmm. to home deliver uh, anything we can after that. It's possible that we could add a third event in the uh, later in the spring if we have a lot of rain barrels. We're very flexible and like I said. Uh, we're dedicated to getting the 1,500 grain barrels distributed and installed in the service area this year. Uh, so, so we'll do it one way or the other. Okay, okay, because um, I mean, there comes a point where you do have to just, you know, it says, hey, you know, we can only deliver so many, and if people want them, they need to come and get them at some point, even if it's maybe 200 instead of 300. And I think, lastly, so no, I share your goal: 1,500, get them out the door, but. Obviously, I think next year, I hope we will be just doing back to normal in person and work with the nonprofit partners because um, it has been very successful over the years. And, uh, you know, I, I, I don't want to do the home delivery program into perpetuity. I want to get back to the regular way of doing it, knowing that last year and this year exceptions. So I think we do everything we can, you're right, to get this done this year. And the other reason I'm asking this is because I want to know. Even when I talk about it, promote it, you know, what if the, the deadline hit and they can't get delivered anymore? But now I know they still have that ability. So um, that's how I'll continue talking about it to folks. But anyway, thank you for that. I just think, I think that uh, we work this year, but next year I want to go back to normal if at all possible. So anyway, there we go. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, that was my last update, so I am going to go ahead. If there's uh, no more questions, I'm going to, go ahead and turn this over to Jennifer Vasquez. So thank you very much. Great, thank you so much, Gus. Thank you, and good afternoon, Chairman Williams, committee, and board members. I will be beginning on page 88 with updates for the DAC Initiative Grass Replacement Program, which we are now calling Grass Replacement Plus. Um, so the program elements, I continue including them within the board packet on page 88 for reference. Um, I'll continue to have those within the board packet, just as a reminder of what that includes uh, for this program and how we're advancing different elements of the program. Um, so in November of 2021, um, we did uh, have the grass replacement rebate amount reflected at the $5 per square foot on the SoCal WaterSmart website for the eligible census tracts that we identified for the CalEnviro screen data that's available. Uh, so to date, a total of five applications already were processed at that $5 per square foot rebate amount on SoCal Water Smart, and we continue tracking those specific uh, dollar amount rebates uh, for the grass replacement plus um, as residents begin receiving that $5 rebate. 
We also have established, um, as was mentioned by Amy earlier, uh, a contract with tree people to implement the residential design assistance and distribution of drought tolerant trees for eligible participants identified again through the census tracts. And so we are looking at a pilot program of approximately 20 projects for the rest of this fiscal year in the service area within the census tracts um, following that grass replacement plus program uh, and making that available shortly. Uh, we did recognize the opportunity to utilize GIS mapping to really assist the application process. Um, this feature really does allow residents to confirm that they're eligible for this particular program because it is a limited census tract. Um, so, you know, we list out cities, but even within those cities, there are census tract specific qualifications. Um, so we don't want to confuse residents. We thought GIS and really having an interactive map where residents type in their address um, and confirm that they're eligible for this program was the best way of moving forward. Um, so that is part of what we're working on now uh, and really finalizing that, making sure that it functions as we want it uh, once the program is ready to begin or that portion of the program, I should say, is ready to begin, which is really the design assistance in the trees, um, the free trees that we'll be uh, distributing. So in collaboration with the PI team, I did want to mention, it just happened uh, this month, but um, I did want to mention it now since we'll be going to holidays soon. Um, we were successful in applying to the Metropolitan Member Agency administered funding, uh, and that was a total of 65,000 that will help fund the contract with tree people and also the marketing needs for the grass replacement plus program. And so this portion of the program, you know, we're still working on, but it, it is, it was encouraging to see that Metropolitan saw the value of the trees and the design assistance. Um, I mentioned to Amy earlier, just as a side conversation, but I want to mention it now that, you know, it's one of its kind, I would say water agencies have given, uh, other water agencies have given this type of voucher of free plants, but this aspect of design assistance is fairly brand new for something that's approved for Metropolitan. So um, I did want to just point that out. Um, and then moving into the grass replacement rebate section, just the regular program for um, beginning on board packet page 89. We of course include the rebate application table on the same page. I did want to say that the five applications that I mentioned earlier are captured in the regular program because these are all processed through the SoCal WaterSmart website. So I did just want to note that, um, but I am tracking it separately so that if there are ever questions about the uh, grass replacement plus applications, those are available as well. Um, uh, so I did want to note, of course, that this begins in the fiscal year with applications received from July 1st and forward. And uh, a total of eight new applications were received and processed in the month of November, which is an update from the table that you're seeing on screen. Uh, and the most current application download numbers actually show that, that we are currently now at 69,000 177 square feet of grass replacement projects um, processed, uh, which is 38 total projects as of yesterday when I ran the most recent numbers. Uh, and again, that's an update to the, the application uh, table that you're seeing. So don't be alarmed. You're seeing a, a, just an update to those numbers since, you know, uh, I'd like to provide the most accurate and, and recent numbers that we're receiving for grass replacement. And so, you know, we did continue the activity for grass replacement, which is encouraging to see, especially with a lot of the promotion that we're seeing with the district and the posts that we're sharing out through our channels. Uh, and the one thing I did want to point out uh, was that, of course, our tagline, go drought friendly and get big savings, which is what we're utilizing with our program, hopes to address the direction by this committee to call out the multiple benefits of grass removal, uh, one of which is, of course, is uh, money savings of reduced water use through the lifetime of the new climate appropriate garden. So I did want to just point that out. Uh, it's one of our taglines that we utilize for this program. And right below the application table, uh, staff has also included the monthly summary image of the Metropolitan Conservation Activity as updated in the August Conservation Board Report with committed dollars as of September 10th, 2021. And information for the grass replacement class dates uh, are included also within this board packet. I won't uh, mention too much into that. We continue to include dates in the look ahead calendar so that you're aware of what classes are available. They're of course wrapping up in December uh, and we'll continue that next year with their the calendar. So we'll continue updating that within our, our board memo. 
And moving really quickly into West Basin chats, um, I have not had the opportunity to just update uh, on that activity. So I wanted to really just provide a summary of the recent West Basin chats that were held. Um, and as mentioned, we identified that residents may have a lot of questions on the application process for our various programs. I really wanted to connect with them to address their questions or concerns. So the chat structure, um, as I think was shared before, provided a brief overview of the rebate program that was featured. Uh, it's followed by a Q&A session where West Basin staff um, makes themselves available to answer any specific questions residents might have about the particular program that's being presented. And so we did hold our first West Basin chat on September 30th, uh, highlighting the grass replacement rebate program. A total of 85 registrations were received with 45 participants on the day of. Um, and then an additional West Basin uh, chat was focusing on the change and save program uh, was held by our program expert, Gus Mesa. He answered various questions on how to participate in the program and also took it, uh, how to take advantage of the $500 high efficiency washer rebate. A total of 74 registrations were received for that chat with 19 attendees on that day. Um, the last West Basin chat of the year took place on Tuesday, November 9th. And this event received 143 registrations with 63 attendees participating that evening. So we do see, of course, it, it varies by the program uh, that we're presenting on and the interests, of course. Um, but I do think this is a good opportunity, as I mentioned before, to engage with our residents. And as we continue planning for next year's um, classes, uh, we will be discussing this with the Pi Department on how to continue these efforts. Um, and then lastly, I did want to make a note that a recording of the uh, latest West Bay Basin chat is now available on the West Basin Grass Replacement Program page um, so that residents are able to access that um, and see the presentation uh, if they're interested in going through the, the Grass Replacement Program. Uh, for Cash for Kitchens, just really quickly, uh, staff, of course, is working with the South Bay City's Council of Governments, and we completed various activities for that program. Um, additional survey opportunities were identified through outreach and conducted this month. Uh, in the month of November, a total of 10 water efficiency surveys were completed with additional surveys scheduled. Again, this is an update from what you're reading on the board packet, just to provide you with the total number that was completed in November. Uh, and the COG staff also began distributing Cash for Kitchens program material, which is primarily the postcard, uh, to local chambers of commerce locations and also staff uh, individually so that they're aware of the, the continued efforts with that program. Lastly, for Ocean Friendly Gardens, I uh, just wanted to call out that we're still continuing to work with Swayser Landscapes. Uh, we have, uh, we're addressing a few design requests by the City of Lawndale, who is interested in, in participating in the grass replacement program. And as we're seeing this, this focus now with public agency landscapes, this is a great opportunity to really provide the additional um, assistance to cities that are interested in creating new projects within their area. So um, that's really where we see the shift over uh, for this design assistance. Not only are we going and tackling that, that with residential, with the Grass Replacement Plus, but now we're also uh, venturing into the commercial or the public agency realm of design assistance, beginning with that City of Lawndale product, uh, project. Um, so that is my last update. I'm happy to take any questions that you may have, and thank you so much. Thank you very much for that report. Um, questions? Yep. No, I'm good. Director Thank you. No, I'm good. Thank you. Okay, let's move on, please. Thank you very much. Yes, President Williams. The next item that we have is item 6E, which is our monthly water bottle filling station program update. And for this presentation, we have Tammy Hurley High, our water policy and resources analyst. Thank you, Jay. Good afternoon, Chair Williams, Member Houston, and Board Directors. So today's presentation will provide a status update on activities of this program. Um, and this presentation begins on page 97 of the packet. Um, if we can advance to that slide, thank you. Um, this includes a list of the applicants from the prior years um, that had extended their construction plan to install their stations. Um, there has been a lot of progress here with most. However, um, the city of Rolling Hills Estates is still experiencing scheduling delays for their installation. So if we could advance to the next slide, please. Uh, page, yeah. So this is a list that includes agencies that have submitted applications um, for the last fiscal year. 
And so far, the cities of Gardena and Malibu have completed the installation of their units. And the Palos Verde Unified School District, uh, they have ordered their units and they're coordinating their installation schedules. If we could advance to the next slide, please. Um, this list indicates the applications we have received so far for this fiscal year. Um, and this includes two applications from the Cal State University, Dominguez Hills, one application from the city of Hermosa Beach, and two applications from the environmental charter schools. And the next slide, please. Um, so here are uh, photo shoots I wanted to share with you all that we recently completed. And the first photo is with the city of El Segundo council members. From left to right is a mayor, Drew Boyles, Director Houston, and then council member Carol Pertzak. And this station is located inside of their library. And this offers many resources, um, as you know, most libraries do, and activities for their community members. And in this area, the foot traffic on a daily basis is more than 100 people. And on the second photo, um, this is located at Maricosta High School in Manhattan Beach. And from left to right is Ed Joseph Bessick, the Director of Operations, Director Alvarez, the 10th grade student, Georgia McKnight, and the Maricosta Principal, Director Karina Gerger. And Maricosta is the only high school located in the city of Manhattan Beach. It serves more than 2,500 students. And the station, the water bottle filling station, is located near the cafeteria in the quad area, where the students spend most of their time during the breaks. And then the third photo is located inside of the Michael Landon Center, which is a community center for the city of Malibu at Malibu Bluffs Park. And this center offers community events and also has multiple playing fields and playgrounds for their community members. So included in this photo here with Director Houston is Mayor Paul Brissanti. So we continue to receive positive feedback on West Basin's water bottle filling station program, and everybody is pleased with their station. So many thanks to all of the directors for adjusting the schedule to coordinate these photo shoots. Um, and thanks to the staff members involved in making these events possible. So next slide, please. So this is the current status of the photo opportunities. These are pending as I am working to try and coordinate a photo shoot with officials from the city of Redondo Beach and the Environment or Charter School, and along with board members from the El Segundo Unified School District. And next slide, please. So lastly, this slide shows a budget for the current fiscal year, and it represents two applications from Cal State Dominguez Hills, um, Cal State University Dominguez Hills, one from the city of Mosa Beach, and two applications from the environmental charter schools. So that wraps up my update, and I would be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Any questions? Thank you, Tammy. Good job. Okay, thank you. President Williams, that concludes our information calendar today. So that takes us to, I'd say what, to our um, closed session? That is correct. We do not have any closed session items for today. How about director's comments, future agenda items? I have a comment. Yes, Director Deer. I've been so noisy today. Uh, the, uh, <laughs> uh, this particular committee's report uh, indicates to me that the creativity of our staff, we have a tremendous staff, and I'm very impressed. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Well, that's a lot. Thank you. Anyone else? Director Houston? Uh, I would just echo what uh, Director Deere said. I think that uh, our staff is doing an excellent job really thinking outside the box and being creative in how we uh, promote the district and the work that we do. And again, you know, we are a member of the community. We're a partner of the community. Um, obviously, we supply the majority of the water to these communities. So um, it's, it's, 
goes without saying, I guess, that we have to do everything we can to make sure people understand the work of West Basin uh, and how they are our partners too. So I think we are moving forward in a very good way and I appreciate it uh, immensely and looking forward to our next reports because uh, every month it keeps changing. So thank you very much uh, to staff and to our general manager. Anyone else? With that, I'd just like to say that I concur. And with that, we will adjourn. Thank you. Thank you very much, President Williams, members of the board, uh, and to staff. Thank you.